Good morning, church. Am I on? Okay. I'm happy to see all of you here this morning, and I hope you are blessed. I had a very short time to figure out what to preach, and I said, what am I going to preach this coming Sabbath? It's so short time. Then I said to myself, well, the Bible is full of stories. What is it to preach? It's about Jesus. So I found the sermon that I was going to share with you today. The title of the sermon is Christ the Rock. We know the story about John and Peter when they went to Actually, I should read. Now, as they spoke, John and Peter, when they went to a temple, hour of prayer. And um, as they were walking towards the gate, which is called Beautiful, there was a certain man that was brought there every single day. Man who was born crippled. They said lame. They laid him there every day. Now, Peter and John, they were walking by. They saw him sitting there. And Peter, he put his eyes on that crippled man. So he thought, He's going to receive. So he gave them attention. So he thought he's going to get something. And what did Peter say? I silver and gold I do not have. But what I have in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise. He got hold of him by right hand and lift him up. What's better, that or the few silver coins? There is no gold, no silver to replace your health. Amen. Now, <clears throat> that man, <clears throat> when he stood up, what did he do? He praised the Lord. He praised the Lord. Here it says... Uh, he was dancing. He was excited. Now, this is the man who doesn't even know, doesn't even know how it feels to stand on the legs and walk and run. He had no idea. Only thing he's seen other people. But he, once he got up, his bones got strong. His ankles got strong. He was able to walk. Amen. You know, when I had a surgery seven years ago, I had to have my arm like this for a week. And then after that, I needed therapy so I can do this. But I still cannot do what I can do with this arm. This one can go certain. This man did need no therapy because... Jesus Christ healed him. Amen. The way Peter says, rise in Jesus Christ. He didn't, he mentioned God. So, in a, if we go to Acts 4, we're going to read verse 1 to 4. Now, as they spoke, people, the priest of the captain of the temple and the Sudeses came upon them, being greatly disturbed. They didn't, those priests and elders and whoever is the leader, they did not like what Peter did. Then, 
Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done, a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands there, stands here before you all. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must save. Amen. What a wonderful words. Knowing Peter, you know, he's ready to cut the ear off or even head. In Matthew 21:42. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scripture the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? It was the Lord's doing and is a marvelous in our eyes. Amen. Story of a rejected stone in quoting of the prophecy of the rejected stone. Christ referred to an actual Occurrency in the history of Israel. The incident was connected with the building of the first temple. While it had a special application at the time of Christ's first advent and should have appealed with a special appeal to Jews, it is also a lesson for us. When the temple of Solomon was erected, the immense stone for the walls and the foundation were entirely prepared at the quarry. After they were brought to the place of building, no instruments was to be used upon them. Building... At that time, I don't know what kind of instruments they had. I remember when I built a second building, I wanted to see how they make those 18-foot walls. And it's prepared at the quarry. And they do test first couple of slabs. They put a little pressure on it, and that's how that happened. But I don't understand. They use lasers and all, all kind of things, but I don't know how they tested at that time. The workmen, and only to place them in a position for use in the foundation, one stone of unusual place for it, and would not accept it. It was that anyone's to them as I laid as I laid it was under their way long it remains rejected stone but when the builders came to laying of the corner they were searching for a long time to find the stone that would fit the size and the strength in the proper shape. To take <clears throat> that particular place and bear the great weight which would rest upon it should make an <clears throat> unwise choice for this important place. And the safety of the entire building would be endangered. So of course, <clears throat> excuse me, they have to make sure 
They couldn't find, they were searching for a long time, but they couldn't find. That one they rejected, they, were, they put it away, so that we're looking for them. And so at the end, they couldn't find a stone that would fit there. And they come to attention to them. It says, oh, there's one, let us see that stone, the one that was rejected. So they brought up, <clears throat> but the last attention was called to the stone so long rejected. It had been exposed to the air and the sun and the storm. So finally, without revealing the slight crack, the builders examined the stone and had borne every test but one. So they had to test that stone because that stone it's, should be on a corner, it should hold the building. If it could bear the test of severe pressure, they decided to keep it. It for the cornerstone. So <clears throat> we have our Christ. He was tested in many different ways. And he passed every single test. Amen. Amen. So all of us, not just us here, the whole world can put the pressure on Jesus and he can accept it. And I thank him for that. That trail was made brought to a signed position and found to be an exact fit. In, prophet, in prophetic vision, Isaiah was shown that this stone was a symbol of Christ. He says, therefore, thus said the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. When we build building or house, whatever, it's got to be a foundation. It has to be something rocky, hard clay, so the walls can stay. Amen. He that believes shall not make haste. Isaiah 28, 16 says, In infinity wisdom, God chose the foundation stone and laid it himself. He called it a sure foundation. The entire world may lay upon it. Their builders and <coughs> griefs, it cannot endure them. With perfect safety, they may build upon it. Christ is tried, stone. Those who trust in him, he never disappoints. He has bore every test. He has endured the pressure. You know, <clears throat> we are sometimes maybe tested in our faith. And trouble comes to us. And sometimes we think we can't handle it. But if we go to our Christ to give him that problem, he can do it. He can take the pressure and he will definitely help us. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, Barajon, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. My Father, who is in heaven, and I also say to you that you are the Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of his shall not prevail against. Now we know Jesus didn't say that it's going to be built up on Peter. <laughs> yes. 
but on the confession that Peter made, you are the Christ, son of the living God. So definitely we can put all the pressure on Jesus and he's going to accept. We have to trust. We know the devil is trying to discourage you even to come to church sometime. He discourages you in many different ways. He's going to come to me different than he's going to come to anybody else. He might know my weakness. But I praise him. I worship him because he's our savior. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. Therefore, whoever hears these saying of mine and does them, I will liken him and wise men who built his house on the rock and the rain descends, the flood came and the winds blow that house and they did not fall for it was founded on a solid rock. Uh, when I, usually when I build a house or buy a house, I never wanted to buy it down low somewhere. I remember many years ago when we bought a second house, there was a beautiful home, but it was next to the river. And my wife, she liked that house. And I say, you know what? I am not going to buy this house. I don't like, that's a river, it's, um, I forgot the name, what's the river there? No, 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 that's in Illinois. <clears throat> this Plains River, thank you. But three years later, we had so much rain, so much water running, that that river flooded. And we were five blocks up on a hill. It came three quarters of a way. I remember that after rain went down and water went out, all you see outside is furniture, carpets, all kind of appliances. And I said to my wife, now you see why I didn't like down. Even the house, it was beautiful. But not now, they have to repair. So we have to be very wise. Where do we build our faith? Our faith is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Peter himself cleared up this when he said, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Paul talking about experience in the wilderness where they ran out of water. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10.4, and then all the drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that flowed them, and the rock was Christ. Isaiah says, do not fear, nor be afraid. Have, I have not told you that time and declare you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know one. Jesus said, we are the witnesses. What I like to say today, my friends, we don't have much time. I don't care how old are you, but when you see what's happening in the world, and when you read the Bible, when you read Ellen White's great controversy, we know what's coming. Like never before. And I said to my wife, how bad it can be? Look at before, they were burning people alive. They were slicing them, they're killing them. 
How worse can that be? It can be. I don't know about you, but we need to pray every day. We have so many books still out there in the room. Great controversy. Please, let us not set those books there. We need to give those books to people. They might accept it. They might not accept it. If they don't, they don't. You keep going. Jesus never dwelled at one place or begged somebody. No, he did not. Our job is we are his disciples. That's what he said. And if we do the things that we are, should do, what Christ asks us to do, I want to meet him up in the air. Amen. Either if I'm alive or if I, if, I'm, if I die before he comes, I know that's going to be a very short time. <clears throat> I want to see Peter. I want to see Jesus. Amen. I want to kiss his feet. Nails going through his hands. I don't, I, I don't know how much that hurts, but I know when I pinch, pinch myself just a little bit or, or cut it a little bit, it's painful. But putting those spikes through the hands, somehow I could see that through here a nail can go, but still painful. But feet, which is solid bones, what kind of pain was that? Jesus bared all those things. He endured. He passed all the tests in the world. Amen. The devil tried to change his mind, but he could not do. I invite you today, friends, to witness to others. We have very little time left. Time will come that we're not going to be able to even carry our Bible. You're not going to be able to, to go witness to someone. There are already some places is not so great. Devil knows that time is very little left, and he wants to make sure that he gets even elect one. He likes to see all of us being his. But we know what Jesus did. We know who he is. He died for me. I'm going to worship him. Amen. Even if devil comes and attempts to the struck me, to discourage me. Last fall, I was, before I had, I have to make a sermon to go Mammoth Spring. And I was in my dining room where we have study. I was all alone. My wife was in a, Illinois, I was home alone. I said, what a great opportunity to study right now. As I opened the Bible and started to look, what am I going to preach? And I did found a sermon out of Bible, and I had that sermon here, the sower of the seeds, if you remember. Something behind me, a loud voice says, no, you are not to preach. This is not for you. The voice says, let your preacher sermon to have. It was a voice that I have to turn around to see what's behind me. That was very scary for me. And you know what? The thought comes in my head. 
Is that from God or is that from devil? Am I supposed to preach or am I not supposed to preach? The voice was so loud and clear that I have to turn around to see who's behind me. And I know I was alone. So we know that's a Satan. He doesn't want you to do God's work. Just like even today, yesterday, he came to us, tried to discourage. Just when I need to have peace and quiet to have a sermon. But thank God I'm here and we are okay. We just need your prayer. And God bless you, and we'll see you soon.